This is truth be told. That not only are there reptilians here. New evidence of UFO fleets. We were close to nuclear war. To help you transform so that you can live your highest truth. We're not being told just because we're not ready for it. The stations of frequency, vibrational. The, uh, I was a homicide detective with LAPD. UFOs increase. Um, visitations. Mercury retrograde, eclipses, how do they affect our lives? How can we use the moments in time to enhance our abilities, to, to empower us to become better people, to have a better financial structure, to mentally create a more confident, better person? Well, today we have spiritual teacher Elizabeth Peru on the show talking about how we can use Mercury retrograde and eclipses to empower us. And I'm excited to talk to her about this because we all go through moments. We're going through moments now with anxieties and depression, mental illness, and many things that pretty much everyone in the world that is experiencing right now. So please tune in today. I'm Tony Sweet with Truth Be Told. Please welcome back to Truth Be Told Studios, the one and only Elizabeth Peru. Well, thank you, Elizabeth, for being here. How are you? Hello, pleasure, Tony. Very well, thank you. It's always wonderful to see you and oh. be with your viewers as well. Well, I, you were just telling me I haven't had a chance to look back, but I can't believe it's been five years since you've been on the show. I don't know how that happened, but... You know, the world has been a little crazy for the last few, so uh, I'll blame it on that. <laughs> yes, that's right. It has. It's been, it's, it's been intensive. Um, yeah. And, you know, not long after we spoke, only a year or so after, yeah, we went into the pandemic. And then, yeah, uh, things have changed a lot since, and a lot more people have woken up, which is wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, and I was going to. I do want to bring that up, and we'll we'll get into that um, right now. As most of the people know that are watching either live or in this next few weeks, that we're coming up for another Mercury retrograde, and then also we have. Uh, you said there was some other things that are happening that uh, might be good for us if we just really meditate or uh, use that energy for uh, good, for our good, own good. So t can you tell us about that? What's coming up for us? Correct. Well, we're in it right now, and we've <laughs> been preparing uh, for several weeks. So I always love to talk about the cosmos, what's happening, because we're cosmic citizens. Uh, you know, we're not just earth beings. Mm -hmm. We're not just souls. We're, we're, we're united with everything. So as we expand our awareness life really accelerates and makes a lot more sense as well. So we are in eclipse season uh, and began a couple of weeks ago. And as we're speaking now, the first eclipse of the season has just taken place. Mm. Uh, and it was a total hybrid solar eclipse on the new moon. And that's a rare one. Oh. They only happen, uh, there's about seven in this century. Only oh, seven. wow. Yeah. So we get a couple of eclipses every year, mm -hmm. uh, every, every season, uh, twice a year. But this hybrid eclipse, uh, we haven't had one for a decade. And as I said, there's about seven every century. So quite a special one. It changes form over the path of totality. It starts off as a ring of fire uh, that, that then goes to a, a total, it goes back to an annular solar eclipse. And it's actually going over Australia this time where I live. Uh, right on the westernmost uh, point of Australia. But as I always say to everyone, doesn't matter where you live on the planet, we all feel it. Hmm. And we are all feeling the transformative changes that the eclipses bring. And they start to come in a good uh, four to five weeks before the eclipse itself. So what people will be noticing is that they've had a need to cleanse and clear their life. Literally decluttering. Now, that could happen on a physical level. So you could have been rearranging your home, moving home, uh, feeling the need to upgrade your relationships. A lot of partnership and relationship issues come to a head at the eclipse. So if that's happening for you, know that you're right on point. Mm. It's meant to be. This is our, I call it our cosmic clear out. 
uh, eclipses always bring to the surface what is out of alignment in your life. Wow. Now, a lot of people are aware of what's out of alignment and they ignore it. <laughs> and they keep ignoring it and ignoring it and ignoring it. I think they'll get, they'll get onto that tomorrow or next week or maybe it'll just go away. And I often say the eclipses are like um, coming to that cupboard you've got at your home where you shove everything in there and you just close the door. And you don't, you don't think about it. It's right. all messy. And you think, I'll clean that out one day. <clears throat> and then the eclipse happens and you go to that cupboard to get something and you open the door and everything falls out at your feet. <laughs> That's what happens when the eclipse occurs. So if you haven't kept everything nice and neat and tidy and seen to, it will all be out at your feet to look at. So a lot of people right now are experiencing uh, perhaps anxiety, perhaps they're wondering what's going wrong, why is everyone coming at them, why is everything happening at once. The eclipse helps you to sort through what's not working for you. That's mm. the gift. That's the gift. And that first eclipse of the season, as I call it, it's the door opener. So it's the it's the curtain opener on the next two weeks. So we have two eclipses every season, and there's seasons twice a year, mm. uh, usually April, May, October, November. Uh, so that second eclipse is coming in um, May 4, 5, and that's going to be a lunar eclipse on the full moon. Oh, wow. So the period we're in right now is called the eclipse doorway. So it's the period in between eclipses, two weeks. This is a very important period of the year, very heightened, accelerated, every single day manifestation increases. It really is. It's potent. So... If you can be aware of how you conduct yourself, what you're thinking about, what you're focusing on, and what you're working through during that two-week period, you really can move your life ahead and get through lifetimes of situations that normally would, would be difficult to get through, would be difficult to face. It's very important what you focus on over mm -hmm. these two weeks until May 4 or 5 because you will amplify it. So let's think about that. If we're thinking about everything that's going wrong in our life or what we don't like or who's who's annoying us and and you're going to give power to it, extra power to it. My advice is to do this. Use these two weeks. Set aside these two weeks and say to yourself, right, for two weeks of my life, I can do this. I'm going to be ultra aware of what I focus on and I'm going to pull myself back in every time I go wandering off to the past and what's wrong and who I don't like and what I'm sad about and what's occurred. And Because when you stay in that energy, you create more of it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And we're all about an empowered future. To have that empowered future, you have to be aware today. And that awareness means when your mind goes wandering off to all your problems from yesterday, catch yourself. Catch yourself doing it and say, hey, stop, we'll pull it back here, pull it back here. What life do I want to lead? Where, where do I want to be? Who do I want to be? What will I like to create more of? What will make me happy? And then imagine it's here now. Imagine how good it feels. I mean, I've done this my whole life. Maybe you have too, Tony, and children are really good at it. <laughs> uh, you just you bring yourself into an imaginary realm and you become that which you most desire to be yeah and we've all got talents and skills that are unique to us because we bring them through from lifetime to lifetime so when you see a child that's born <clears throat> excuse me with a unique talent and we call them gifted i always chuckle to myself because i think well it's not a gift it didn't land in their lap they earned it they they would have earned it over lifetimes. Mm -hmm. They would have practiced that talent and brought it through with them because every incarnation, whether on earth or elsewhere, we never lose our experiences. They're all recorded on your soul. We're a great recording device, the soul. And so we bring in with us everything we have practiced from lifetimes. And part of the process of each life is to trigger 
those memories of those talents and skills and start using them and applying them. And that's when the magic happens in your life. When you use what you're naturally good at, what you brought in with you, that's when you're on purpose. Mm. And our task is to remember what we're good at, and to go through life discovering mm. it. And during this eclipse portal, you'll be getting reminded daily of what you're good at. And if you're doing it or not, if you're using your talents or not, you'll be getting encouraged by the cosmos to use what you're good at. I mean, that's what we're here for, to lead a life where we uplift one another, where we uplift the cosmos. Nothing makes the soul feel more on purpose and on point than that. And we know when we're not doing it. Mm -hmm. Because life feels stuck, stilted, negative, uh, uncomfortable, painful. Everything seems to keep going wrong. Uh, Have you ever found that yourself that when you when you discover what you're good at and you start using it wow oh for sure yeah. yeah yeah that's how i do what so, i do <laughs> that's how you do what you do that's yeah. right and you do what you love so i encourage everyone that's listening right now to use these two weeks to meditate meditation is wonderful just close your eyes uh, and i often say just put your hands over your heart and close your eyes And just imagine you're sinking all the energy of your head down into your heart and focus on the heart space because that's the container of soul's essence in your human body. We often think that the brain is the be all and end all. Mm -hmm. Really, the heart is where it's at. That's the greatest energetic force in your body. uh, And that's where you pierce through to who you are when we get through that heart level. So meditation is as simple as closing your eyes and just focusing on your heart and being still. What what about those processes? Well, what about those people? And I I always said, you know, I, in my early twenties in college, I was diagnosed with ADD. And a lot of people are like, oh, I don't believe in that. But, you know, I found that that ADD people are very creative people, uh, which I am. And so instead of looking at it as a negative, I use it as a positive to do what I do. But it is harder for me to calm my mind and just close my eyes to meditate long enough to keep a manifesting idea or something to calm my mind long enough to probably make a difference. Is there a a length of time that you need to achieve to have a successful meditation? Or how does, how would that work for people that their mind just go constantly? Well, what, what's coming to mind as you're talking to me is you would have an amazing imagination. I do. And I would imagine (laughs) anyone with ADD or anyone that's, you know, inspired, their imagination is one of the great talents. So when, so you want to focus on what you're good at and try, try to work with what you're good at because we're all different. Meditation doesn't, there's not one size fits all. Right. It's completely, uh, it's up to you what works best for you. You find your way. And I would imagine for someone like yourself, you're going to focus on using your imagination when you meditate because then it makes it fun. It makes it exciting. It makes it natural and it makes you want to do it. Mm-hmm. So when you go to meditate, you would be, you know, close your eyes and maybe you might have a book with you. I always recommend having a notebook with you and um, pen and paper hmm. so you can go in and out of your visions and write things down or draw right. things down. So you're co-creating. So you'd go in, close your eyes, you don't focus on your heart and you, you might speak to soul, the heart space, which right. is you, which is the real you and say, soul, show me the greatest vision for my life. Let's hmm. go. Uh, You give yourself a focus, make it easier for yourself Hmm. rather than just sitting there with no intention. Right. So give yourself a focus. I always do that when I meditate. I have a focus and I, I, I direct it. I say, show me, show me this, show me that. Give me ideas about this or that. So show me the highest vision for my life. Let's go. And then just let your imagination lead you. See where you, see what visions come, what feelings come. You might start to feel your body rock, sway. Usually when it's rocking forward, you know you're in the flow. <laughs> uh, and then 
you may have to open your eyes because you get so excited about what's coming through. Good. Open your eyes, write it down, draw a picture, go back in. It might be five minutes. It could be 10 minutes. You might start to enjoy it so much it's 15, 20 minutes. But that would work really well for you. And I believe it would work for anyone that has a vivid imagination because that soul's voice speaking with you. Uh, the more imaginative you can be, the more creative and fulfilling your life can be, your human life. It's the key. So you're mm. right on track. Tony. I love that and you made that. Fortunately, yeah. No, yeah, I said ahead. I love that you made it a positive because a lot of people, yeah. uh, I can't focus. Oh, I can't meditate because they make it. A lot of people that talk about meditation makes you feel like you're failing at being able to meditate. But what I, I love that you're saying is it's okay. In fact, those things that are going on in your mind could be creating something great for your for your future so i think that's actually a, amazing for the people out there that feel bad that they can't meditate now elizabeth peru just gave you permission to to create even more <laughs> and we have to we have to give ourselves permission um you know I'll, i've always been strong on this you do it your way right find your way you know, learn from different people, learn from different techniques, and then you use what you're good at and you make it your way. That's how it works best for you. And that's when you're going to really rise, mm. where when you step outside the barriers, you know, in our society, imagination should be right up there as a number one skill with intellect, because it is. Mm. I believe that, yeah. They're both required. The, I mean, our great, our great teachers, Tesla and Einstein, they always said, the imagination you don't have that, how can you create? How could you bring through greatness? Right, right. <laughs> um, so in the meditation, in my meditations, I'm always focusing on the imagination. And I say, Sh so show me, take me there. And then, then you've got your brief, you see? Then you've got your brief, you've got your directions. It's like a map. Then you know where to go with your life. Then you know what steps to take every day. You're not lost then. Hmm. You, you guide yourself forward. Yeah. It's, a, it's a wonderful way to live. I love I love that, and I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna back up a little bit when with the um, Mercury and also the eclipses. Yeah. Um, yeah. We know, you know, through science that when there's a full moon, that it affects our tides. It it affects you know a, a a lot of other things. But some people are like eclipses. How does eclipses affect us? emotionally spiritually how does eclipses um even be able to affect us personally well you'll know when there's an eclipse in it in, in, it pulls you within let's say that it makes you contemplate right it makes you stop in your tracks and, and it's almost like a cosmic ceremony it's like going into a temple hmm. and and like the great the bell rings boom, and then it all goes quiet and you're right. very silent you're very silent for a moment that's the moment of the eclipse anyone's ever witnessed an eclipse knows that it's uh if you ever you know particularly lunar eclipses if we, if we look at them because they're, they're easy to look at you feel like you're in a sacred moment you think wow this, i'm that something i'm part of something bigger mm -hmm. so on a soul spiritual energetic cellular level we're called to attention it's like a great cosmic bell rings and you know about it if you're aware or not it doesn't matter but the more aware the more you can work it to your advantage so it's like a great cosmic moment where you're called to attention and you get a feeling that hey i, I need to be doing something here i need to be something needs to shift something needs to change right uh, it's a moment where we grab your attention cosmically wonderful and it's at that moment you can choose maybe a different direction ahead you can choose higher consciousness perhaps the eclipse brings you into higher consciousness it increases the vibration on the planet and that means you'll get those um you know the downloads through your ears the right. high the high it's like a tuning fork going off right right you will hear a lot of that sleep will be disturbed definitely around eclipses you have very vivid dreams the soul is trying to get your attention, your 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 conscious awareness, and it's saying, "Look, are you on track? Can we get you on to purpose more? What more could you be doing?" So that's 
that's the opening eclipse and we've got two weeks to practice hmm. your new way and at the last eclipse it's, it's like the closing ceremony <laughs> where we honor it again, we say thank you. And then the weeks and months after, you're now applying your changes in your life, you're growing, you're maturing, and hopefully you're more aware because of it. Now, with Mercury retrograde, Mercury's actually moved retrograde right after the first eclipse, about four or five hours after it. So we're in Mercury wow. retrograde <laughs> right now. Oh, I felt and it. I I've been feeling like, it. <laughs> you, 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 I like it when it happens with the eclipse. It really, it actually makes it softens the edges a little bit, shall we say? And what it does, it allows you to be very open and allowing with your communication. This is the time of the year, whenever Mercury is in retrograde, that people are able to open up and talk about the difficult things that they normally uh, hide away, are unsure of what to say. People are more open to listening. Uh, and understanding than at other times of the year. And that's the power of it. So you can have those conversations you've been waiting for. They may just, you may notice they come of their own accord as well. Hmm. Uh, I, I've always, I always look at the positives of everything. And Mercury retrograde is a powerful time. It's not a time where everything goes wrong. Even if your electronics do play up as they can, good. It may mean you need to change systems. It may need you're doing things the old way and you need to do it the new way. You may need to upgrade. You may be given a gift. Right. You may be told, look, look at that system you're using. It's, it's no good for you anymore. There's something better. Try it. Here it is. Here it is. So it pushes us out of complacency into the flow of accepting what's in our highest order. So we're being helped all the time. It's incredible the help that's around us. Hmm. Uh, That's nice. And these portals as well, many people can choose them also for transitions. So we often find during the eclipse portal that it can be a period where people are very ill or sick that they ch choose to transition from this life as well. We find that a lot during the eclipses. It's easier for people to slip in and out uh, because the, the layers between dimensions are, are thinned, shall we say. <laughs> They're very, very uh, luminous right? as well. Mm. Well, let, let me ask you this. Um, as you know, I'm sure in in Australia, probably you've noticed the same. Since a pandemic, it's even gotten worse. But um, mental health has become an epidemic, pandemic, whatever you want to call it, because it's it's gotten pretty bad. And I think the COVID really pushed people over the edge. Uh for being alone or just you know fear and the world is a lot of fear there's a lot of fear in the world right yeah. now um yeah. how does one use these next two weeks that they're going through anxiety depression you know bipolar anything that you can think of in the mental health realm that might help them in enrich their life or become, I guess, a little more freeing when it comes to their anxieties. What, what right. can, if you don't mind me asking, what, what, what can people do to, to work on that? Lots of things. Lots. There's lots. There's lots. Number one, you're right. The fear has increased and the pandemic was fearful in right. itself because we, we hadn't had one in a hundred years and it's a very <laughs> different world to what it was in 19... 19, 19. So, number one, turn off all those things that are negative and fear-based, fear, fear, fear based, i.e. Right. the news. Uh, if you are on social media all the time with pages that's just whipping up fear because that's what sells in, in this society at the moment, get away from it. For, give yourself a detox for two weeks. Move away from it. You'll still be practical. You'll still be grounded. You'll still know what's going on. You'll find out. It's amazing when you turn away from dousing yourself in negativity. Right. That you still find out what you need to find out. You'll still be a productive citizen. You'll, you'll be a way more productive <laughs> citizen, actually, because you won't be weighed down. So turn away from that for two weeks. We can do that. We can give ourselves two weeks where we don't hang off every news broadcast. If you've got those friends around you that you know are always talking about the negatives, maybe reduce your contact yeah. for a couple of weeks. You could do that. 
go outside and be in nature. No matter what the weather, you might say, oh, it's cold, <laughs> rug up, go out there. Go out in nature and just with no preconceived um, ideas and feel the energy around you in nature, around the trees, the water, the air, the animals, and notice how they're all getting along. And notice that that flow is very different to the false flow we're being fed through our airwaves all the time. It's abundant. It's beautiful. So align yourself with nature's force. Absolutely. And then ask for help. Hmm. Go looking for help. Help's all around you, but you have to ask. So you need to get in that place where you say, I'm open to being helped, even if you just say that out loud to yourself or quietly within yourself. If you find yourself in a, an oppressive situation at home, for example, that you don't know how to get out of it, go into your own heart and say, please help me. Help me find a way. That sincere calling brings it on brings you the answers and then notice the signs when they come in notice the maybe a conversation you overhear on the bus or a song on the radio or uh, a book that's recommended more than once and then follow through do it go and seek it uh meditate as we said simple as just closing your eyes and focusing on your imagination Exercise, stretch your body. So important to keep the physical strong and healthy. I always say strong soul, strong body. Mm -hmm. The stronger the soul, the stronger the body. You've got to be physically strong and present. Uh, you know, I, I, I stretch every morning. I exercise every day. You need to when you've got a lot of spiritual energy coming through you. Mm. So even if it's just putting some music on and just sitting on the floor and stretching your legs and it could be aching you because you haven't done it in so long, do it. It's wonderful for moving the energy through you. When you sit in one place in the same energy all the time, it just builds up in your joints and it's painful physically, mentally, emotionally uh, and spiritually. So we need to move our bodies and it, if it's just a stretch. That's enough. Drink yeah. lots of water. Absolutely. Get get the energy moving through you. Look at your diet over the next two weeks. If you can go more plant based, do it. Lighten yourself up. Lighten up your 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 body. It changes everything. I remember when I first woke up in the mid nineties, uh, immediately I had a feeling that I had to become vegetarian. Hmm. Uh, and it was harder back then. Oh, yeah, back the then it was like we cardboard. Now, <laughs> it was hard work. It really was like, yeah. wow, what am I going to eat? I mean, and a lot, a lot of people say that these days, and I think, well, you're going to eat everything. It's yeah. so much. It's amazing. Um, but, yeah, you may get that call to change your diet as well. Yeah. Uh, and that's all part of it. It's about following through. And don't be too hard on yourself. It's step by step. It's, a one, it's one step at a time. I always say that every day is different. Every day is like a year and a day, especially <laughs> going forward. So much happens. Um, go easy on yourself. Love yourself. You know, hug your heart and tell yourself that I love you. I've got you. And know that as well that there are so many people out in the world just like you. You're not alone. You're not alone. We're all, we're all feeling similar things. Uh, and you know, we need to... Increase our spiritual health mostly. Find a source that can help you. Find someone that aligns with you positively. Somebody that uplifts you and encourages you. Right. That's what you're looking for when you're in um, a mental health dilemma. You're looking for inspiration. And then bit by bit, you keep exposing yourself to positivity over uh, enough weeks and enough months, one day you'll have the courage and it will just all change for you. You'll go, today's the day, and you'll feel the shift. Uh, we need to make the conscious choice to surround ourselves in what makes us feel good rather than swamp ourselves in what pulls us down, which is the easy way, <laughs> really, the lazy way. Right. <laughs> and unfortunately, our, our 3D society likes to keep us controlled, so they keep us in fear. Mm-hmm. And you need to see above that at all the goodness on this planet. Can you imagine if our news broadcasts broadcast every day all the good stuff that was going on? 
we would be through the roof feeling amazing right. because I, I intrinsically believe that humanity is very very good very powerful they're here to serve and we all want what's best for each other there's a small percentage that are stuck in their pain but because the media and and everywhere but they just amplify that we think that that's the reality but it's not we've got to see the goodness in people and be that ourselves be the change yep. so and there's I, a lot people could be doing now i i agree that i remember in high school you know back in the 80 1980s where you know, if there's four or five people and one person start talking about somebody else in a negative way and then all of a sudden you're like, yeah, I don't, you know, and you start feeling the same way about that person. And you've never even encountered that person before, before you even meet them. And I, it's kind of like the news feeds now and, you know, politics and everything else. People start putting a, a, a little seed in your brain and you start believing something before you even know exactly who, what, when, and why of a person or a situation. I And so I agree of separating yourself from the crowds and the social medias and the news um, because it, 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 it can change your mood instantly. Um, instantly. Instantly. Yeah. yeah, we in a way, we have to be more savvy now. Going forward, it's only going to increase with the advances in, oh, yeah. in AI and, and what's here and what's coming very, very quickly. Yeah. Uh, you need to be, you need to go back to your roots. Remember what you grew up with. Go back to your roots. Remember who you are as a, as a physical human being. Go back to the practices that you had as a child that got you through and use them now because we're, we're in such a mental sphere. You know, we're moving into that Aquarian era. Mm -hmm. um, over the next few decades very quickly and it's all about innovation technology uh the thoughts the air the airy energy and it's wonderful for for progression but unless you're grounded in it you'll lose yourself in it right uh so yeah we need to make we need to step away from being the sheep in the crowd and we've always needed to be like that but it's easier now because you can connect with people like yourself that are doing it too. And we, we find each other around the world. We find our communities. Um, That's for sure. And important that we're not negging on what we don't like, which is what social media does, but we're increasing what we do love. Mm -hmm. So I always say focus on what you love rather than denigra denigrate what you don't like. So rather than all putting all of your, en your power and your energy into saying what, what's not right, Put it into what is right and increase that. That's hmm. good use of your energy. That's good use of your life. That makes for a way more productive, inspiring, feel-good life for you and for everyone that comes into contact with you as well. Because remember, we have a responsibility not only to ourselves but to everyone around us to conduct ourselves with dignity and maturity and respect and honor in our lives we are a representative of the divine on this planet hmm. can you imagine if you walked through your life every day knowing that how differently you would act right it would be beautiful it's to see true. that <laughs> and that can be your that can be your brief every day to hmm. remind yourself i'm a representative of the divine how is that going to change my actions today I challenge yourself I want to ask you this before before we get out of here because I've done this in the past where I've challenged the universe, um, may, maybe in a negative way. I mean, you could call it God or universe, whatever. Where you you know your life doesn't seem to be where you think it should be, and you you get mad at God or mad at the universe, or you you say, oh, you know come on, give me everything you got. And usually it may not happen immediately. Sometimes it may, but sometimes the, the universe says, okay, here you go. And it's not necessarily always a positive thing. But what I've learned for the people out there is, um, I remember when I was, you know, I was a natural bodybuilding and I was always in shape and all these things. Well, uh, about 
six months ago, I got up to 245 pounds and I was like, oh my God, when did I become this person where I wasn't taking care of myself, I wasn't really exercising, I wasn't eating very well, and I've lost now almost 30 pounds. And I didn't become vegan, but I've, you know, I've gotten gluten free, uh, dairy free, which I was always kind of dairy free because it hurts my stomach, but a complete dairy free. Um, and I have become more eating vegan stuff. And it does inflammation in my joints went down. Like I said, I've lost weight. But going back to the challenging the universe, I realized it's not necessarily a negative thing. But sometimes the universe will say, I'm going to show you how strong you are. You may trip and fall for a while, but I'm, I'm going to show you how strong you are. What is your thoughts on challenging the universe? Because I'm sure people that are listening to this today were like, my life sucks and you can blah, 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 you know, and you challenge the Good. universe. Good. Be like that. You have to be like that. I was like that too. I love that you've said that because I totally agree with you. And I remember when I was exactly in that space, I, <laughs> I, I felt the same thing. And, and <laughs> I challenged to the universe too, Tony. And I said, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in anything. Right. And I, I said, all I'm going to believe in is myself. I remember that. And this was a long time ago. Right. Um, and you know what it is? It's the point of surrender. Oh, nice. Wow. Yeah, that's what it is. And we have to get to that point where enough is enough. And we, we just say, that's it, enough. Universe, I challenge you. I remember doing that myself. I remember New Year's Eve 1999. <laughs> I was um, on a small island here in South Australia called Kangaroo Islands, a really spiritual place. And everyone was drunk, you know. It was Y2K was about to happen, right, a new right. century. And I'd lost my friends and I didn't know where anyone was and I... I walked out to the ocean. I found some swings near the ocean and I went and sat on the swings and all the fireworks went up and I just looked at the sky and I went, you know what? I want a better life than this. And I remember throwing down the gauntlet and surrendering and just saying it and everything changed. Hmm. And you're right. It wasn't always easy. The challenges weren't easy, but right. it was a moment and I, it's a moment of surrender. And so we have to get angry and we, it's good for you. Get angry. Mm -hmm. Get it all out. Yeah. And to keep doing that. I'm not saying life's a bed of roses every day. Express yourself. Uh, be honest with yourself. Even if you spend half an hour a day getting it all out, go for a walk, have a chat, get all your anger out, get all your fears out, express them, be honest, and then you use the rest of the day to move it up again. Exactly. Do it. Get, you have to have an outlet. You have to. Very important. Um, we're not saying you're holier than thou. No one is. Mm -hmm. We've all got stuff going on that we, we're not happy with, we want to improve, we've got no control over. Um, all of us, there's all things that we, we don't like, uh, but don't keep it bold without, express it. Uh, but do it in a productive way, if you can, rather than a harmful way to yourself and others. That's the difference. If you can, if you can do it in a productive way, find your productive way to express your truth. Uh, rather than getting online and, and spouting vitriol at everyone, and which doesn't help anyone, makes you feel bad too. Uh, find a productive way to surrender it and then go ahead and make your changes and level up. Prove your worth to yourself. Prove your worth. Be accountable. Uh, and watch life change for the better. Uh, mm. it, it, it's like going, it's like the matrix, you know, it's like taking that, that pill, going down the rabbit hole. <laughs> Reality, as you know, it changes forever. Yeah. But you wouldn't want it any other way. No, no. And in closing, if you could just, for our audience today, you know, Mercury just starting, the eclipse has started. Again, what can people do if it's even five minutes? If it's a day or even five minutes in the next two weeks, what can they do again to better themselves, their life, and just become a little bit closer to the universe? Take five minutes a day, literally, and make a meeting with yourself. Pencil it in when you know you can. So you make it serious. 
say, right, five minutes, say two o'clock, I've got, I've got half an hour, I know, so at two o'clock every day, I'm going to take five minutes where I either go outside or I sit in a quiet room, I just close my eyes and I'm going to sit with my soul. Just be still. Be still. Be still. Close your eyes and, and sit with yourself. That's the most challenging thing that anyone will ever do, to be quiet and be with yourself. But it's the key that unlocks the door to your truth. And if you do that for five minutes every day, life will change of its own accord. And it's that simple, it really is. Mm. That can be the door opener on your new future. And then where you go from there is up to you. There's so many avenues. But do that. Sit with yourself. It's one of the hardest things, but most productive. Well, working out is not always easy. You get sore. You know, yeah. it's sometimes the you know a couple of days afterwards you you can't even walk but the long term effects of building strength and and um confidence um pays off and you know, like you said it's not always easy at the beginning but um it usually pays off in the end so why not go for it, it? i know I know what you mean. I've been a dancer my whole life. I've always been into physical fitness. So I know, and it teaches you about life. You're right. It really teaches you to get through life because you can apply what you learn, moving your body mm -hmm. to everything in your life. And so this is why I say you must have a strong body. Look after your physical fitness. It will improve your spiritual health immensely, immensely. Yeah. Oh no! Yeah, Th this definitely Wonderful has training. improved. Um, yeah. Just feeling feeling better. When, you know, when you when you button in pants that you couldn't have fit into for the last four or five yes. years, you're like, oh, <laughs> makes you feel good. It does. Yeah, that's it. It makes you feel great. Yeah, and it just yeah. and then that lifts the, the vibration for everything. So yeah. yeah, do it. Yeah, it's amazing what changing the physical body can just yeah really open up everything else. It can be the gateway as well. Beautiful. All right. So, what you, you know, with the pandemic, it kind of put a damper on a lot of speaking engagements. But are you, are you speaking a lot in Australia? Are you doing live events online? I'm sure people after the day will say, I want to know more about Elizabeth. And uh, yeah. you have an amazing following, and people just really mm -hmm. believe in you know your teachings and uh i would love to see if there's anything coming up for you yeah well i've been doing this work now for well over 20 years so uh, and as we were saying before we, we went live it's about the consistency and you know you do you, mm -hmm. you grow and you're there for people all the time you're in it for the long haul but that's certainly me i know you are too so i i've been writing energy forecasts and a life guide every week since 2003. Mm. And even though I live in Australia, I write intuitively for the whole globe. So I write seven days in advance and I speak them as well. So you hear me speak them and you listen every day. You listen at what's going to be, what, what, what what's coming up energetically, where to keep your focus, how you're going to be growing spiritually, where you're going to be challenged. So you set yourself up for every day and you've got a map in front of you. And it's called the tip off. Because it is a tip-off. I'm tipping you off on what's going on cosmically. Uh, and the tip-off global energy forecast. Um, as I said, people all around the world, a huge following in the US. You read and listen to every day as your own because I write intuitively. I'm not an astrologer. I, 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 I love the stars. I love the planets. But I'm primarily a spiritual teacher and I teach us about higher consciousness and working with cosmic energy mm. so i have uh, many thousands of people around the globe that follow the tip off every day and they always tell me thank you because it keeps me focused it stops me making mistakes and they grow their life immensely accelerated through it so that's one of my primary teaching vehicles as i said i'm publishing it every week and every day we get to connect and talk like this um, and you can do that through my website elizabethperu.com I also hold uh, live events on Zoom, usually about four or five times a year regularly. So very much like we're doing now, we speak about topics that are of great interest to people, ascension symptoms, how to grow your soul. Um, nice. Strong body, strong soul was a popular one we had recently. I talk a lot about Generation X as well, which I know we're part of, mm -hmm. and how we are very important because we're the last of our kind. We knew life before and after technology and we're the cosmic earth bridges. So I really 
Uh, I'm here for that generation hugely, the people that are probably in their maybe late 30s to late 50s because that generation is so important on the planet right now. A lot of my audience is in there. Uh, this is when we tend to wake up and when we tend to make a difference with our lives. Um, I also offer personal sessions, so you can work with me one-to-one, particularly if you're a member of my tip-off. And my guided meditations I have over 45 meditations online. People are always coming in, downloading them and working with me. I teach you how to meditate and how to use your imagination wow. to create as well. Uh, and I also have an online course where I teach you how to create a soul-based career, just like I have, just like you have, and how to do it. And I'll walk you through it with uh, videos and commentary and guidelines. And so there's always something going on. I'm, I'm there every day on social media, on my Facebook page, Elizabeth S. Peru, and on my YouTube channel, which I've had since 07 as well, Wow, Elizabeth Peru. So every single day I'm in the trenches, out there on the front line, doing my best to encourage people to be their best serving humanity in higher consciousness. That's what I love. I love it. And let's not make it another five years. Let's, let's have you back sooner. Yeah. <laughs> um, love, Tony. love you, Tony. I love you right back. And uh, I really appreciate you sharing with everyone because I've learned a lot today. I hope everybody out there listening and watching learned a lot. And uh, please Go to elizabethperu.com. So much is there, you know, meditations, guided meditations and the tip off and I'm sure any uh, upcoming Zoom events. So please uh, go to the website. Especially in eclipse season. Right. (laughs) This is the time. And I know I've got a full eclipse guide out with the tip off videos, everything to really help people through. These next two weeks are so important. This is where we can really shift our life and accelerate together so it's important period i'm ready i'm ready i'm ready i know so well i think that was uh the universe reconnecting us so i i'm i'm very happy about Mm -hmm. that so thank you elizabeth so much for being a part of truth be told again and uh, i i can't wait to have you back thank you love you i love you right back Thank everyone out there Mm -hmm. and thank you everybody for tuning in always uh, Friday uh, at 3 p.m. And uh, please watch. Um, we have Robert Hensley doing the Man Report on Mondays at 3. We have uh, Metaphor doing the Truth Be Told Spanish Latino version of uh, on Tuesdays at 3. Bonnie Burker doing the Truth Be Told Transformation. And then, of course, me every Friday. Always thank you guys so much for being a part of Truth Be Told and subscribing and leaving comments and sharing the shows. It means everything to us. So until next time, I'm Tony Sweet for Truth Be Told. This has been another episode of Truth Be Told. Thank you so much for watching. Recorded live at UBN Go Studios in Burbank, California. Join us on social media. Facebook, Truth Be Told Radio. Instagram, Truth Be Told Paranormal. Go to Truth Be Told Worldwide for more information on upcoming shows.